In this short video, I want to talk about some of the primary differences between a small business and a startup. Sometimes there's a little bit of a confusion um, and people think that every small business that starts up in their community is a startup. And um, uh, likewise, sometimes startups get confused for small business owners. And um, while they're related, there are some distinct differences. Let's talk first about what a small business is. I ran a small business um, and still uh, keep that business running to some extent. Uh, my business was Kaleidoscope Video Conferencing and uh, I started this in the late 90s and we sold and installed video conferencing equipment. And uh, this business um, was not built on a new idea. Uh, this uh, setting up AV equipment, setting up communications equipment is generally considered an integration business. So you're integrating these different components not only together but also with the client's network, the client's um, procedures and practices as well as facilities. So it was not built on a new idea. This is an established um, uh, idea. It had established business processes, supply chain networks, and regulatory frameworks. So it was pretty f easy for me to get set up as a dealer for various uh, companies and um, to be able to start selling this equipment. Uh, there was all sorts of procedures as far as the insurance you needed to carry, the how long of a warranty you had to give to your customers uh, under law. So on, some states have laws regarding this. Um, also, there was um, all the tax, um, what gets taxed, what doesn't get taxed, all that kind of stuff was laid out well in advance. Uh, this still has a high failure rate, so um, small business owners can expect that uh, it's unlikely that they will succeed, about still a 50% failure rate amongst small businesses. Certain small businesses, such as restaurants, typically have much higher failure rates as well. Um, a startup, however, is much different in that a startup does start with something new. Uh, an acceptable definition of new is a process or product that is 10 times better. Think about PayPal. I'm going to use them as an example here for a couple of things. Um, when uh, they started, you could send money electronically, but it would take quite an amount of time. There was a fair amount of fees involved. And so when PayPal came around, it was really a 10 times better way to do uh, electronic transfer of money. Startups will often start with a very uh, small segment in which they can dominate. So they'll try to dominate either geographically a small area or they might try a particular uh, type of consumer. Once again to use PayPal as an example, um, they started realizing that it was the eBay power sellers that were really starting to use um, their service and that they could dominate this marketplace and they really concentrated on making it easy for those folks that were using eBay to use PayPal. It became uh, the de facto way to send money on eBay very quickly. Okay, So they dominated that segment and have been branching out ever since. So startups um, have to develop business processes, supply chain networks, and regulatory frameworks. Um, I don't know all the things that PayPal had to go through, but I imagine they had a lot of hoops and a lot of challenges from other financial institutions that really thought that they should not be in that business of um, uh, doing electronic money transfers. Okay? Think about Uber and Lyft right now. They've had to go through numerous uh, challenges because we haven't had this idea of ride sharing uh, that's mediated by some sort of app or some, some sort of company in between or brokered by that company. Okay, so they've uh, had to deal th uh, of de with all the problems of developing all that. Um, startups need to grow very fast. Okay, so in order to dominate a market, in order to win out against other uh, folks with similar ideas, they have to grow very fast. Sometimes they're looking at trying to double every couple of months. <clears throat> so it's an enormous growth rate. As such, startups are often what we call first movers. They're the first ones uh, into a market. 
There's uh, several advantages to being a first mover. Um, sometimes referred to as the first mover advantage. Um, first one being your first to market. Okay, so you can capture that market share without having to worry about rivals. Uh, this might be considered a blue ocean strategy. Um, there's a book by that name where uh, the idea is that you're entering a market where you have no competition. Okay, and that's not necessarily a bad idea. You have a lot of initial press, so um, you're going to get the initial press as the first one to bring a product to market, and hopefully you're going to do that successfully. The disadvantage is you have to be the explainer. You have to explain why people would want the service, how it would be used. You have to get them to trust that this would actually work. Um, you have to work out all the R&D issues. So you have to work out um, the research and development issues, uh, what the problems are. So a good um, example of this might be a company named Pebble. They were one of the first ones that had what uh, most people would consider a legitimate smartwatch. Um, but they um, had to work out a lot of the issues for how do you make a smartwatch actually work um, and then um, telling people why would you want this, what would the, be the functionality it would provide. Uh, and so as such they would kind of get stuck with their product for a little while as well because they'd put an enormous amount of their capital uh, into um, the research and development for a product and so they don't have a lot of capital to spare until they can kind of earn back that investment. So um, there's another group of folks, there's actually several different groups, so we'll just concentrate on one more called Fast Followers. Okay, so these companies are um, ones that come into market, they come into it late, but um, are, are a little bit later than the first movers, but uh, they're actually a lot more likely to win. There's several advantages of being a fast follower. One, you don't have to be the first mover in order to innovate. So Apple came out with their Apple Watch, certainly had some innovations beyond what the Pebble Watch did. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, Pebble and some other companies had really proven out that there was a market for this. Um, so as a fast follower, you don't have to um, I worry about whether there's a market or not. It's maybe been proven by those first movers. And you can also use your existing um, place in the market or your existing resources to promote your new product. So um, there's been several different studies. Um, this is one, uh, kind of a classical one. I believe these, this data still holds today. But if you look at first movers, um, they're the first to sell a product. They have about a 50% failure rate. Um, fast followers entered early, but not the first. And they have about an 8% failure rate. Okay, let's take a look at a co some companies and see if we can determine which one was the first mover or which one was the fast follower. Facebook or Friendster? What do you think? Well, um, Friendster was actually the first kind of social network where you could um, friend another person and be friends with them online. Um, Facebook came about afterward and um, has obviously dominated uh, this uh, kind of uh, social network. Now, did Facebook actually copy features from Friendster? I seriously doubt it, um, but it does show that the first one to market did not necessarily uh, make it as the dominant one long term. Now Facebook certainly in recent um, months or years has been stealing a lot of ideas from other first movers. So for example copying a lot of the features you see in Snapchat and um, applications such as that. So what do you think the Rio Mio or the Apple iPod? Well the Mio Rio was uh, probably the first real uh, MP3 um, player that you could um, uh, put your music on, listen to it wherever you went. But um, Apple came on uh, into this market very quickly um, and was able to use not only its uh, distribution network to help uh, sell the iPod, but also its expertise in design. Okay, look at those two. Which do you want to carry around and be seen with? What do you, what do you want to touch and feel and interact with? The one on the left might have been a better product, 
but it just didn't have the design elements that Apple was able to build into um, their version when it came to market and has come to dominate. What about Hydrox and Oreo? Well, Hydrox was actually the first one to have that kind of sandwich cookie. Uh, and uh, once they started selling well, Nabisco saw the, um, how well they were uh, doing in that market and decided they too could create a sandwich cookie like that. They called it the Oreo. It's pretty much a, almost a noun now, right? If I just said, give me an Oreo, you would know I'm not looking for a name brand, but I'm looking for a specific type of cookie. And uh, even if that was a homemade one, you would know which one to hand me. Same thing with Kleenex. If I say, um, uh, are there any Kleenex here? You know I'm looking for tissue paper, right? Not the brand name Kleenex. Okay, so Oreo has really come to dominate uh, over the uh, first mover, Hydrox. This next example is kind of interesting. So we have uh, Tide Pods versus All Mighty Packs. Well, Tide Pods was actually the first mover. They were the first ones to kind of develop this idea where you'd have, uh, instead of measuring out your detergent and all that kind of good stuff for your laundry, you would instead just take this little thing and throw it in there and it would dissolve and it would uh, clean everything just great. Uh, unfortunately, they had uh, big problems with production and so they weren't actually the first ones to get their product on the shelves. So ironically, they um, generate all this hype. People started looking forward to this. They thought this was a great idea and all was the one that actually got their manufacturing together and was able to bring this first to market. What about things like um, web browsers? Well, you probably heard of a first mover called Netscape. Um, this was uh, back in the day when we used to pay for browsers. So you'd actually pay for them, $40 or whatever it was for that piece of software so you could browse the internet. Um, internet Explorer came around and they got better and better and better and saw some of the things that Netscape was doing and copied it uh, and became very dominant in the uh, browser wars. And Chrome have, has since come on, so even uh, fast followers have to worry about other fast followers coming on and taking their market share as well. Overture and Google. Um, now, once again, I don't think Google was uh, actually copying Overture or was looking at what Overture was doing per se, but uh, these were two search engines, and Overture did have kind of the way um, to uh, look at almost a page ranking type system where it would look at interconnected links to try and give you the best results. Okay, so very similar, but obviously Google um, uh, did very well in that market and uh, it was also very easy for users to switch, right? It doesn't really cost you much uh, to switch from one search engine to another if you hear that the uh, Google is a little bit better than the one you've currently been using. So um, startups are interesting um, companies. Uh, they can be very exciting to work with. Uh, they can be very frustrating to work with. Um, this is a quote from Sam uh, Altman, uh, who uh, works with Y Combinator, probably one of the best uh, business or startup incubators. It says, a word of warning about choosing to start a startup. It sucks. And I would say that um, there's a certain amount of energy and enthusiasm you have to have, a certain amount of passion uh, if you do want to work in a startup, don't go there just because you think you want to cash in on uh, some potential um, future uh, windfall uh, when it goes public. Uh, that's rare that it happens. Uh, so really you need to be working at um, a place where you think you're going to solve an important problem rather than you're going to make a bunch of cash. If you are interested in startups, I would highly recommend searching on Google, perhaps, or maybe Overture. Um, how to start a startup, you're going to find a series of video lectures from Stanford um, that is um, got some really great speakers in, in this. And you can also get it as a podcast. Um, I listen to this probably once every two years. Um, I always pull some nuggets out of it uh, each time. Um, so anyway, hopefully that uh, gives a good overview of the differences between a small business and a startup and some of the um, advantages that uh, first movers may have, but some of the um, real advantages that a fast follower might have.